world-class triathlete turned firefighter turned best-selling author, Mr. Rip Esselstyn has always lived a heroic life. From saving human lives as a firefighter to animal lives as a plant-strong vegan, he has always responded to the call. Nowadays, he serves as a major proponent of society transitioning to meatless eating. His vegan philosophy comes from his father's loving decision to help the whole family become vegetarian over 25 years ago. His father, world-famous Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, is considered a pioneer in the use of plant-based preventative medicine. My father was one of my, one of my heroes, no doubt about it. He was the primary influence in me uh, making the transition to eating this way. While serving as a dedicated firefighter in Austin, Texas, USA, Rip created a simple and powerful vegan diet plan out of concern for the health of his fellow colleagues. In 2003, we had basically a very, very competitive station, and we had a bet to see who had the lowest cholesterol level. And so we um, had our cholesterol levels checked the next day. The results came back, and one of my fellow firefighting brothers um, had a cholesterol of 344 at the age of 33 and as a group of firefighters literally the next shift in, a, in an act of solidarity to really save his life we uh, we started eating uh, plant-based plant strong This effective eating system gained national exposure and led Rip to write the powerful award-winning book The Engine 2 Diet and create an informative website. He also has a YouTube channel that guides people step by step through his 28-day scientifically researched eating method. Hi, I'm Rip Esselstyn and this is The Engine 2 Diet Prep. We got a lot of press and media attention um, as a bunch of firefighters that started eating plant-based or vegetarian. We were on the cover of the, of the New York Times national section. Uh, we were on national NPR radio, uh, numerous radio broadcasts. And then all of a sudden, I realized as a firefighter, not as a doctor, not as a nutritionist, but as a firefighter, I was in a unique position to reach out and, um, and, and connect with a group, with an audience that would never otherwise hear this message. It almost became like an obligation for me to write this book in, in order to let people know the irrefutable and the undeniable connection between what you put in your mouth and your weight, perfect health, and becoming bulletproof to Western disease. In 2006, Rip, along with other members of the Engine 2 Fire Station, were honored by Supreme Master Ching Hai with the Shining World Leadership Award for showing people that they too could lead a heroic, compassionate lifestyle in their own homes, simply by changing their food choices. In a nutshell, I am um, I'm kind of challenging people to eat more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds. It's really that simple. Uh, right now, if your average American is consuming a, a minuscule 6% of their calories from fruits, vegetables, whole grains and beans, and almost 90 uh, Ninety-five percent are coming from processed and refined foods and animal-based products. And so my goal and my mission and what I talk about in the book is all the reasons why you want to go from basically eating a plant-weak diet to swinging the pendulum around and eating a, a plant-strong diet. Mr. Esselstyn is featured in the critically acclaimed 2011 documentary, Forks Over Knives, and is a respected member of the Whole Foods Market Healthy Eating Team. I've got a little couple minute snippet with me and the guys at the firehouse, um, and basically highlighting how we, uh, we eat a plant strong diet um, to be the best firefighters we can be, to be at our, uh, to be at our best. 24-7. Uh, I started this eating this way in 1987 for a number of reasons. Um, w one was for health reasons and the other was for performance reasons. And that's because my, my mentor in the sport of triathlon, a guy named Dave Scott, the six-time winner of the Hawaii Ironman Triathlon, was a hardcore vegetarian. And, uh, and so I was like, well, if the number one endurance athlete in the planet eats this way, then there's no reason why I shouldn't eat this way. 
I think it gave me the edge as a uh, as a world class triathlete for uh, for a little over 11 years, and then I continued to compete uh, at that level even as a uh, as a full time firefighter as well up until the age of 43, 44. Um, but I've I've won numerous triathlons, numerous um, endurance competitions, duathlons, uh, open water swimming uh, competitions, and uh, I contribute uh, my success in large part to um, the uh, the plant strong or, or vegan diet. Among his accomplishments, at the age of 43, Rip Esselstyn was named one of Austin's 10 fittest people. In 2008, he won the U.S. Masters Swimming National Championship and record time for his age group. We asked Rip, based on his personal experience and research, if he would have performed better as an athlete if he continued eating meat, fish, dairy, and eggs. No, no. When you're not eating um, refined and processed foods, when you're not taking in saturated fat, dietary cholesterol, uh, um, acidic producing animal protein, you, uh, you're going to be much better off and you recover better. And as an athlete, one of the things that's so important is being able to train and then recover. Uh, as a firefighter, one of the things a lot of people don't know is that 80% of our call volume, we're making medical calls. So we see up close and personal the devastation that's being caused by the, the fork and the knife and the spoon. Um, so eating this way, it, it gave me, um, it, it gave me the, the means to not get sick, have the energy to, to write the book, and, um, and continue to do all the things I wanted to in life. Be a firefighter, be a father, uh, be, a, be a husband, and still, uh, and still take care of myself uh, by training for at least an hour a day. What is your assessment of the effect of a plant-based diet on your physical abilities as a firefighter in terms of both stamina and strength. By far, this is the uh, the best diet to eat. Your blood is going to be as clean as it can be. When you eat plants, uh, specifically the the green leafies, your body uh, produces something called nitric oxide, and this allows all your vessels to to dilate. And when they dilate, uh, a lot more flood can get through to the muscles, the tissues, and the organs. Um, and if you have more oxygen you're going to be performing better. One misconception that I always have to clear up first and foremost because uh, most, most people don't understand that um, you can get all the protein you need in abundance to repair muscle and also grow more muscle uh, through a, a plant-based diet. As human beings, you know, there's three macronutrients um, that we get out of food. We get, there's fat, which we can store easily. There's carbohydrates which we can store as glycogen or glucose, and then there's protein. We can't store protein. So we use what we can, and then we discard the rest. So now, at, um, at the fire station where they're all vegan, what is the food like? What are the meals like at the fire station? Well, great question. And, uh, you know, I tell people the four major food groups of the, um, of the Texas firefighter are burgers, pizza, uh, beef fajitas, and ice cream. So for starters, I just took the four major food groups and made them healthy. So instead of doing um, beef burgers, we did black, black bean oatmeal burgers. And then for a side, instead of doing fries that are you know, dunked, in, uh, dunked in oil, we did baked sweet potato fries. And instead of doing like green beans, for example, smothered in butter and oil, we did uh, green beans with a wonderful um, spice on top. And then pizza. Firefighters love pizza. So we did a clean whole grain crust on a marinara sauce um, with all kinds of veggies galore. Whether it's, you know, pineapples, artichoke hearts, sun-dried tomatoes. We got, we got pretty extravagant. Instead of doing beef fajitas, we would do portobello mushroom fajitas. So we'd slice up portobello mushrooms, uh, with barbecue sauce and either uh, um, cook them on the grill or bake them, bake them in the oven. And then instead of doing ice cream for dessert, we would do a healthy like silken tofu lime mousse uh, with fresh raspberries on top and a sprig of mint. And you guys loved it. And you know, in the book, for example, I have nine different dinner categories. 
these are all very, you know, stick to your rib, kind of masculine type uh, meals. For example, we got pizza night, we got burger night, we have big salad night, we've got uh, soup night, we've got Tex-Mex night, we've got comfort food night. Um, so all these categories, uh, close to 125 different recipes. Great. Would you tell us about your diet on a typical day? Yeah, um, I keep it. I keep it simple. In order for for this to be um, sustainable and permanent, it has to be simple. I start the day with what I call um, the big bowl, and it's three different types of cereals, and then I do. Um, a tablespoon of ground flaxseed meal for my omega-3 fatty acids. I do a small handful of walnuts. And then I do usually three pieces of fruit. I usually keep frozen fruit in the, um, in the freezer. That way it never goes bad. It's very, very economical. So I usually do um, mango chunks, raspberries, blues, blueberries. And then I'll also do something fresh like a banana, um, um, a mango, or um, a peach or a kiwi. And believe it or not, that is my breakfast cereal. It's the linchpin that, that has kept me going for now 24 years. And that little bowl there, or I should say big bowl, has anywhere between 35 and 40 grams of protein in it and the same amount of fiber. So it is just packed with all kinds of wonderful things to kind of start the day out in a great way. On Engine2Diet.com, Rip guides each visitor with resources that make it fun, easy, and delicious to effectively change their diet and their life in just four weeks. This basically guides you through the 28 days, and each week I have anywhere from a two to, to four to five minute video where I explain to people what you're going to be eliminating and why you're going to be eliminating it. In week one, it is... Um, it's all dairy. Week two, it's all uh, it's all meat. It's all flesh. And week three, it's all extracted oils. Um, and then I also have week by week accompanying um, meal plans and grocery lists for people that you know will invariably say, "Well, what am I going to eat? What in the world am I going to eat?" And uh, so that's why I've supplied these tools. Um, but I also like to tell people that 99% of the food on the planet comes from plants, 99%. 1% comes from animals. During the 28-day health opportunity, every day try a, a new food, a new plant-based food that you've never had before. And exercise, uh, you know, eating plant-based is king, um, exercise is queen, combine the two and you have a health kingdom. I find it's very, very important for, to build the immune system, to fight depression, um, and then if you're female, help fight off the, uh, the osteoporosis. By the way, as an aside, is the best form of absorbable calcium comes from uh, plants. It doesn't come from dairy. And, uh, and this is, of course, this website will all be free um, because I just want people to, uh, to start eating this way because <laughs> it will, you'll save yourselves and you'll, you'll help save, save the planet. We asked Mr. Rip Esselstyn if he had some kind words to share with our viewers for Father's Day. One of the greatest gifts that anybody can give any father out there is the gift of going plant-based. I would challenge the men out there, what is more masculine? Eating a certain way and dying of heart disease um, at the age of 51, 52 and leaving, leaving your family behind or eating a plant-strong, plant-based diet and being there for, for your children, for your wife, um, in a very, very kind of responsible and uh, in a heroic way. And I would, I would say that being around uh, for your family in a responsible way and being healthy is the more masculine thing to do.